Welcome back, sixth graders. We're continuing part two of our G Egyptian money, mommy box that we were working on. Last week we made the top. Now, if the top is soft enough, you still can add some details to it. Um, I know mine here has dried out just a little bit. It's a little tougher to um, to work with. Uh, you can moisten it up a little bit. It will be difficult when it's leather hard like this or even firmer um, to add things to it. So hopefully I will have tried to keep them nice and moist from last week when we worked on them if you needed to still add some details. it is This one here is hard but I can still kind of add some things to it um, as far as carving onto it and things like that. So it can be moistened up just a little bit but sometimes when it's by the time it's harder it is a little bit more difficult to work with I'm going to set it aside here we're gonna to make today the box portion of it um, we're gonna make the same um, uh, size and look of the top is to fit the box and the box is going to fit a mummy in it and the mummy will make later not out of clay we're gonna make it out of something else um, that will be part three of this video okay so I'm gonna set that aside for a minute what we are going to do is again get two balls of clay this time and you're going to wedge them like it did before get out all those um, air bubbles uh, wedge it for just a minute or two and then flatten it use your hands to begin with just to kind of get it somewhat flat and you do want this kind of both pieces of clay that I'm going to give you you do want them kind of in a, a narrow band a narrow slab so begin to kind of uh, can slap it down that kind of helps it uh, stretch just a little bit and roll it out use your stilts between the two and that will give you a consistent width of a slab all right now I have noticed that from the last time many of you had troubles with um, the clay sticking sometimes if the clay is really wet it will stick to the roller you kind of lift it up every now and then as you're rolling so that it doesn't just stick kind of lift it and then move it move the clay around that way all right we're going to use the same pattern as we did before cut this out put that right on there use your cutting tool pin tool or or one with kind of like the knife blade cut around that pattern piece and pull away make a slit there and pull away the excess clay the extra clay will you might use it you might not we're mainly just making the box okay now that is my first step do make sure I did notice when I was making my first one that um, one the clay is going to shrink just a little bit but two, it also stretches when you work with it. So you may be using this or this as a guide to make sure that everything stays the same size. Okay, that I'm gonna set aside for one minute and I'm gonna roll out, I'm gonna wedge the second ball of clay and roll it out, okay? Now, I've got this pattern piece for the sides. Now, if you've rolled it out and you don't have room for both of them, don't worry about it. Just wad up the clay again and roll it out again and make another um, uh, rectangle. These are the walls. All right, I've got one that needs to go over here. And this is the approximate size. They're, these actually are going to be a little large and I'm gonna cut away some of it. So there's yours to ends up being just a smidge short. Don't worry. You can add a little piece in or I have a feeling that these, um, oh, you're gonna have a little extra. Okay, now we're going to score. Um, first of all, score again. Roughing up the edges, this helps the, the pieces um, go together very well score all the way around and also score the bottom of your two slab rectangles S score both pieces and da, 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 rough up those edges. All right, 
So then add a little bit of moisture, rub it in just a little bit. That'll give you some of that slip is like glue. It's going to help keep everything together. Now, I would try to choose a place where you want to have either a corner or actually I kind of found that this works the best is to put the bottom one on first and having your joining spots on the sides. That's kind of going to be the most secure. Now you're going to just kind of press since you've got that nicely scored and some moisture there. You're just going to put a little pressure on it to push those pieces together. Next you're going to take your second one and stick it right on there and kind of make that angle that you see there. And then cut off the excess, make a little mark and cut it. And then you're going to score both of those side walls and you're going to join those all together. Alright, now these are important. These you don't want to ever you want these um, the walls to the the base to be married forever. You don't want them to come apart. So this joining that we've just done is really important. Now um, I would take a tool. I do kind of like the ones that have kind of a flat edge like this, or ones that have kind of an edge like this. And you're just going to basically join those walls together. I would do the walls first. Now at this point too as you're putting together it is important I did notice when I made my first one that things stretched a little bit see how that's just a little bit big um, so before that gets too joined together I'm going to kind of trim it down just a little bit yeah and I can cut away some extra and kind of make sure it's sized and then I'll go to the business of joining it all together so kind of be put the walls on size it up that's gonna work there we go and then we're at the business of joining so maybe your finger works pretty good might be your best tool actually if you have any gaps, use a little bit of extra clay and gap those up. Now this edge here is a bit flat, so you can kind of take a flat edge, something like that, to square up the, um, the base, and then go around. Now see, how, see what I'm doing here? I am joining up the side walls together. Just smudge that clay together keep it nice and smooth and join those together same with the sides there smudge together make it one it's it's got to be together forever and when things dry out is when we have our most trouble things want to re, want to remember that they were not together and want to come apart so we want to take the extra time the rib is really a nice tool to smooth out as well as these flat ones here are great just to help keep that straight edge straight all right so that was the outside now I'm going to go to work on the inside now I would take a little bit of a tool that kind of has a slope like that and I would just go into that little seam there and join and smooth that area out. We just want to make sure it's nicely connected. And same way with inside the seam there. If at any time you need to add any extra clay, I would make a little tiny snake. And you can put it inside those walls between the floor and the wall and do the same thing. That might give you some extra reinforcement. Do the same thing with the side walls. Join those together. I don't want to see that crack because you don't want to see that open up again. So smooth it over so you no longer see the, the joints that you created. All right, now if at any time also, if you need to level out this top surface, use some of those tools to even those out. 
extra confusion. Add your initials to and six F or six N to the bottom inside. Okay, and that's easy to do. That way, in case these two pieces get separated, we'll find them again. Now, last, I'm I'm going to kind of just make sure that this fits on there well, and and we've got some sides that match up. That one's working out pretty well there. Now, I would like you to also, the very last step here is to smooth it out. Use some flat objects like the ribs to kind of smooth out the sides. Your sponge is the one that erases all woes. It's very good for that. Um, and add maybe just a little bit of moisture just to kind of smooth out anything that you need smoothed out. Um, add any details if you'd like to write something in the side. Um, don't press too hard. You do just kind of want to, when you're moving it around, support it and, and kind of work with it that way. Okay? nicely and smoothly. If you've got some sides that are uneven, just use a little compression to make it the size that you want. Smooth it out with your fingers or sponge. And at this point, once it's all done and ready to go, put the two pieces together and put them on the board. I'll have a board again prepared for you and put them together. They're going to be married uh, together and so we want them to kind of dry out together and be together like this um, you know make sure it's the how it looks the way you want it to because nothing's going to magically change it's going to be the size uh, that you want it so if you need to at some point like needs to push out in a couple areas do that put it back and put this on the board to dry out extra clay will go in the bag all your tools will go back into the containers at the center of your table and then put the trays, the sponges, all of these pieces together up at the supply table to be put away. Then you'll get a sponge and uh, as a uh, team on, at your table, sponge off your tables. Um, once they're all done, I will put these in the kiln when they're dried out and fired and then we will glaze them. We'll add a, a nice coat of glaze inside and out as well as I'm still working on on the plans for the mummy that's going inside there so stay tuned for part three on what we're going to put inside so uh, at this point when I shut off the video you can raise hands and ask questions just simple questions as we definitely want to get started and spend our class period working on it see you later